Pastor John, welcome to 5-Minute Church, um, our little Bible study group, our prayer group that we have here on Sundays, and uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we're doing a series, I think it's probably one of the most important series that, that we've been uh, looking at. It's called Eternity, and Eternity is a long time to be wrong. This is one thing that we've got to get right, right? Do you guys believe that? We can't, we can't mess this one up, because if we do... So the more that I'm dealing with this series, the more I'm getting afraid and I'm freaking out because I'm going, man, I've got to make sure that we're, what we're talking about is right. We've got to go look at the Word and we've got to figure this out. I had a buddy of mine who uh, reached out to me um, and he used to go to attend a church that I was a part of and, um, and I'm like, hey, are you going to church anywhere? Because he wasn't for a long time and uh, he just wasn't plugging in and dialing into any church anywhere and he said... Yeah, we finally found one. He goes, I don't really like it, but we just go because of the girls. He has two girls. And uh, he goes, you know, and he goes, really, he goes, we've already punched our ticket. Now it's really kind of up to them. And he actually said that. He's like, you know, I punched my ticket and now I'm just like coasting. So he, he, he was thinking in terms of salvation as being this point of going, man, if I trust Jesus, if I, if I you know, I say I profess to, uh, to love Jesus and be a Christian, then I'm in, right? I've punched my ticket. And um, I don't know if it totally works that way, right? Because if we, we study the Word of God, it demands a lot more of us as Christians. Don't you believe that? More than just fire insurance. Yeah, more than just fire insurance. And, and, and speaking of fire insurance, uh, we've been sharing here and praying for those in California and our, our brothers and sisters down there. We're praying for you guys in the fires. Um, and just a horrific thing that's going on and, and just the tragedies that happen, whether there's storms or fires. And it just seems like it's one thing after the next. There was those shootings um, down there as well. Um, it just broke my heart. We had friends that were at the Las Vegas shooting. I guess one of the guys that was there that lived through that was shot in this other nightclub shooting down in California. And it was, it, it, it's just, it, it's just blowing my mind, just the pain, the, the, the things that people are going through. But what's also freaking me out is is I'm really looking at this and going, so those people that passed away in these fires, that there's, there's, you know, how many of them knew Jesus? How many of them um, got eternity right? And the scary thing is, is that there's probably some that didn't. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not God to judge, but I do know based upon Scripture, we, there's things that we can't ignore in Scripture, and there's, there's parts of the Scripture that absolutely freak me out. I want to bring a couple verses that, that we need to just be really serious about because they're in the Bible. You can't just ignore them, right? So look at Matthew chapter 7. This chapter probably freaks me out more than any, okay? Um, but Matthew says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And how many? Many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. What's he talking about? He's talking about broad is the way that leads to destruction and hell, eternal punishment. Broad is the way, and it says many will enter through it. It's a wide open path to total destruction. And many, but small is the gate and narrow the way. We know that is through Jesus Christ. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to God except through me, which a lot of people go, wow, that is really closed minded and narrow. And yeah, it is. There's only one way to eternal life that's through Jesus, okay? And so that part, that scripture is, is a tough one for me. The other one is further on in this chapter. Look at, look at uh, verse 21 of this chapter. This one is what makes me just pay attention and actually have to check my own heart and go, where am I at? Where is my eternity? Because he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Holy cow. This is Jesus talking. Okay, well, we're not mixing any words here. There's no way to interpret. He's not telling a story. This is... This is, he's saying, many, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, um, hey, I, 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 even, I even drove out demons. I was doing stuff for you. And he's like, you didn't, do, you didn't do why I put you on planet Earth. You didn't do the will of my Father. Do these scare you? And I think there's something we need to, I'm looking at this, this and I'll be honest, I'm looking at this series and I'm going, I've got to make sure that 
I'm not missing the boat on what he's asking me to do. Right? Because eternity is a long time to be sorry for not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen? That's scary. It's scary. Um, and so one of the things I want to talk about is Americanizing our Christianity because a lot of times we can get it wrong when we kind of put, I, I see this in churches, that we kind of run our churches like a democracy. We run our, our, our thinking a lot of times is, is having like two groups, okay? Uh, you know, like in the world that we live in, there seems to be two groups, Republican and Democrats, and, and you know, those are the two polarized things that we sometimes view um, Christianity in our lives as these two th groups, these groups called Christians and non-Christians, right? Okay, and you're either in this camp or you're in this camp. But then I'm looking at this verse going, well, wouldn't those be Christians? And he's saying to some of them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So I'm like, there might not be these two camps that we so often talk about. And, and because you have to understand something right off the bat, that Christianity is not a democracy. What is it? It's a kingdom. It's a kingdom. It's a monarchy. And there's one king. Who's that? Yeah, God who sits on his throne. Okay? And so if we look through the lens of, of, of our democracy, and we always love to have a say in everything, and we see this in church. Everybody wants to have a say in the church. Everyone wants to have a say about Scripture. Everyone reads this and goes, eh. Some people read the Scriptures now and go, I, I don't really believe that. I'm not going to buy into a God that does that, but I'm going to take some of these other stuff, and, and I'll, 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 I'll talk about that. But we rarely talk about that. But this is the kingdom of God, and it's all about the king. So, this is where we're going in the next part of this series. There's, there's going to be, this will take us to the end of the year. There's going to be five more parts. And I want you to understand that there's going to be five different groups that we're looking at. Not just two. It's not believers and non-believers. There's actually five. Okay? We're going to be taking a look at five groups. And um, you're gonna, you're, we're all in one of those. Okay? And so this is a time when we're going to be challenging people to go, which group are you in? And which group do you want to be in? Obviously, it's going to be the fifth one. I'll, I'll give it away. The fifth one is the one you want to be in, okay? And that one's going to be awesome because it kind of brings all of Christmas and the end of the year and everything together. So I'm really excited. But the first group that we're going to look at is the non-believer, okay? Because that's somebody that doesn't believe. And um, I think the best scripture for defining what a non-believer means, okay, somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus, is in Romans chapter 1, verses 18. And few churches will preach on this. Because I, I challenge some of the, the, the most um, popular pastors today. Okay? There's a lot of popular pastors out there, and there's a lot of po popular churches, and they're reaching a lot of people. They will never preach this passage of Scripture. I challenge them to. I challenge them to preach this because they'll offend people in their congregations. It talks about stuff that we deal with today that's not politically correct in here. And... <clears throat> It's a very, we've, we've talked about this before at Five Minute Church, but <clears throat> here's the cool thing. I don't have to worry about offending anybody. If you don't like it, then you just delete our app. And uh, that's between you and God, right? So the wrath of God is being revealed against heaven, against all the ungodliness and wickedness of the people who suppress the truth of their wickedness. Since what has been known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Okay? There's no mistake. Being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Okay? Right off the bat, he's basically saying that all of creation is without excuse because there's always that people that say, well, what about those people that didn't know about Jesus or never heard about Jesus? Because they're saying, just look at creation. Just look at this world. And there's no excuse. Look at a baby being born. There's no excuse for understanding that there's a divine nature that's going on, right? And so, verse 20, 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of immortal God for images made to look like mortal man, being, being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over to their sinful desires of their heart, to the sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and they worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. 
even their women exchanged natural uh, sexual relations with unnatural ones. And in the same way, men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to the deprived minds so that they do what they ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, they're slanders, they're God-haters, they're insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. All right. Not only that, that list, just they get more. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, death they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of those who practice it. That's what the world we're living in. That's, that's intense. It's so intense i got to have some more lip balm. So, I, uh, have you guys ever seen these gourds? They're the ugliest looking things in the world, right? So this time of year, we have gourds, okay? And they, they're, there's, who eats gourd, first of all? How many people are going to serve gourd this week? How many have ever eaten gourd? Okay, squash is a gourd, okay, but what about, what about these kind, like this kind? Has anybody ever eaten a gourd like this, right? No one's eaten this gourd. And in fact, um, there are amazing good gourds. There's like all different kinds, and there's like some with like cancerous warts, or I don't know what's on this thing, but they're different colors. They, they grow them, and in fact, <clears throat> We, we were at Walmart, and they had just bins and bins of gourds. And I went in there trying to give gourds out tonight. They're all gone. And I'm going, who's buying all these gourds? Because nobody eats them, right? You're not going to have people over and like, hey, you guys, come over to our house. We're, we're having some delicious gourd. Has anybody ever, ever been offered gourd at somebody's table, right? Pass me the gourd. You'll never hear that at the Thanksgiving table. Hmm, Mom, can I have some more gourd? Right? I asked one of the ladies in the produce section, the produce section, she's like the produce person, and I'm like, hey, where's your, do you guys have any gourds? Because I couldn't find any more gourds, and I wanted you guys to, to have a gourd tonight. And she's like, what's a gourd? I'm like, you're the produce lady, and you don't know what a gourd is. There are like a hundred different kinds, sizes, shapes, and not. <clears throat> what's your favorite gourd? You know, it's like, what do you say? Like, uh, my favorite gourd is the orange one with the, <laughs> with the warts on it. I don't know what that is, right? But here's what my point is, is that gourds are like non-believers. They are. Because what is the purpose of a gourd? Decoration. Decoration. The only... I, I kept looking at these big, huge pallets of gourds that were sold just in a, just one little grocery store, and they're sold all over the United States. There are literally thousands and thousands of gourds that are going to be sold, and what's going to happen to them? Throw them out, Throw them out right? Baby rattle. A baby rattle. <laughs> that really dates you if you're, this was your baby rattle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, baby rattles. Yeah, well, that's okay. Maybe we could. I. I but maybe ninety nine point nine percent. The other point one percent is a baby rattle. But the other ones are all getting tossed, right? But why do people have them? Because they look great. All right. Hannah has this awesome display. You walk up to our house. You know, we got the pumpkins and and the gourds. This is, I stole one of her gourds. She's like, don't ruin my display because Thanksgiving is coming, right? And family's coming. And I was gonna take her display and give it to you guys, but <laughs> she got mad at me. So here's the gourd. And um, I took one, but they're decoration, right? They're to look good on the outside. They're to serve this, 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 this luxury, this purpose, right? And, and this is exactly what's happening with, with non-believers. Like, they look great on the outside, right? We, we're acceptable, right? They, they spend a ton of time as nice decorated life, right? People that are living to just please themselves and look good on the outside and have things and, and, and prosper. But... In the end, it's going to be thrown away. That's the saddest part, right? If people are not believers of Jesus, they're going to be thrown away for eternity. 
And not by God's choice, but by their choice. By not following Him. He's given them a choice to be a gourd or not. All right? Pumpkins have purpose, right? Well, pumpkin pie. And they're, they're very close, and a lot of them are in the same display. But, but it, it's, this, this is no good. This is no good. This fruit, I don't know what it is. Is it a fruit? Is it a vegetable? What is it? What do they even classify it? As a cancerous growth? I have no idea. But the definition that I want to say of a non-believer is anyone who rejects the truth. Right? They have no purpose to build the kingdom of God because he's saying that, remember in that, that scripture, he says, those that do the will of my Father, they have purpose, right? They have purpose are those. So there's going to be a lot of gourds that go, hey, over here, I, I do I, Jesus. I, I went to, you know, I downloaded Five Minute Church. I, I do about Jesus, right? And um, he's like, man, you're a gourd. What am I supposed to do with you? you? You spent your whole life making it look so cool on the outside and being decoration. Away from me, you evildoer. And that's, that's sad because what is the truth that people reject? In, this, in that scripture that we just looked at, what is the truth that people reject? They reject God, right? They reject creation. All right? They reject life. They became fools. They say that um, they reject all the things and everything is from God. They don't believe that, right? We reject sin. It talked about sin. We don't care about that, okay? We only, uh, not only to reject the truth, but we support and advocate those that also reject truth. Did you catch that? That's what's happening in our society. Not only do people don't care, we're all a bunch of gourds, but they're like, hey, it's really cool to be a gourd, and everybody should be a gourd. And you know what? It's not cool to not be a gourd. And, 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 and we're inventing ways. We're inv- I, I guarantee you this wasn't the natural gourd. This has got to be some scientific experiment of like, hey, let's get more warts on our gourd because they look cooler in a little display, right? Sadly, Christians are also not supporting the truth. It breaks my heart. They're the people that are, that are Christ followers that aren't listening to the truth of what the Bible has to say. And that's a scary thing. I was shocked um, when I was a, started out of being a pastor, and I thought we'd do this small group. We do this. Um, we had this Wednesday night Bible study stuff, and we dif- do different topics. And I was, I was going to do a topic on evolution and creationism, and my whole purpose was to just really empower the people to to have a better say in, in that in that debate between creationism and evolution, right? And it almost split our church. I, I went in there thinking that, man, people believe in Genesis 1-1, right? No. And I'm like, well, if you don't believe Genesis 1-1, then how can you believe Revelation chapter 22? How can you believe anything in between those? And, and, and it's unbelievable. I mean, we have issues in the church. Um, you know, we advocate and, and, and we're, we're blending it and we're, we don't even want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about homosexuality and what, what, the, what, we, what the Bible calls a sin. We don't want to talk about abortion with almost 40 million babies being killed on planet Earth every, every year. We don't want to talk about our own selfishness. We don't want to talk about all these things. And it says they become filled with every kind of wickedness, every greed, depravity. And we're getting sucked into this. We're becoming gourds. And, um, but I want to challenge us because... The list, um, the list of gourds, there's going to be some very evil people, but there's also going to be some people that were pretty nice. There's going to be some people that looked, wow, they look great. What's wrong with this gourd? Why would you throw this out? Because if believers, if you're a believer tonight, why does this matter? Why does it, why does it matter? for? Because I'm, I'm hopefully I'm assuming we're all believers here, right? And... And hopefully, if you're tuning in, that, that you consider yourself a believer. And if you don't, then I'm so glad you're tuning in. But, uh, so why does it matter? Why should we care? Um, because we need to care because I, I, I can't remember the last time I've been in some amazing churches over the last years and, and sat under some amazing preachers and been inspired by some amazing people and amazing worship and been a part of some great Christian things and I can't remember the last time they talked about hell and what happens to the gourds. Jesus himself saying what happens to the gourds. 
and it breaks my heart. It's not popular to talk about what happens to gourds, right? We have, how many of you guys have even thought about what happens to the thousands of gourds probably the end of this next week before Christmas? They get tossed. What a waste. How much money and, and time and energy. And uh, we could probably, you know, if we grew something that people could actually eat, we could probably feed a lot of people that were hungry, right? And we're just going to toss them away. I want, I want us to think about Thanksgiving in a different light tonight. It, it's not our purpose to be a gourd. God did not create us to be a gourd. He created us to be a pumpkin, right? That, 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 that's purpose, right? On the outside, it can, still, it can still, you know, give him glory as, as a created thing, but there's purpose in it. This has no purpose. And so... I want us to be challenged, Five Minute Church, to say, we got to get serious. We may be the only ones that are talking about hell. But there are a lot of people that are going to be perishing, and it breaks my heart. I, 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 I'm, sometimes I can't go to bed because I keep thinking about people. Uh, you know, we're just on an airplane, and I'm going, man, if this thing goes down, how many people don't know Jesus? And then I just want to get up there and just be like this radical, freaky guy. And, but nobody will listen to me because they're rejecting the truth of God for lies. And I'll be, act like a crazy man by, you know, fire and brimstone. So how do we, how do, we do this? How do we take a, a gourd that's a gourd and, and make it into a pumpkin, right? And I really believe the Holy Spirit's the only one that can do that. But I do believe that we need to open our eyes and, and, and try to befriend the gourds. And, and there are gourds in my life that I just... I, I grieve. I wish they'd be pumpkins. I wish that they would have purpose outside of just, just decoration. And so we pray. We reach out. And we got to get serious about trying to reach these non-believers. And um, I'm challenged every day by that. And, um, and I, I want us to be challenged by that too. And so group number one is the non-believers, right? Now we're going to be diving in the next few weeks into four other groups. And I really want us to be all a part of the last group. Amen?